Where do we start? Yeah, where, where do we start, Macca? How long have we got? Um, I actually didn't enjoy the game. To, I mean, I enjoyed the results, of course. I didn't think the game was um, a good performance from England. Um, lack quality. I thought they were quite negative in the second half. Went backwards a lot. So really put an England fan... It put us through the mill, really, to a certain extent. I, I, I thought, first and foremost... I, I, the five, uh, was it Barry or should have got sent off for Button, Jordan mm -hmm. Henderson, regardless right. of anything early on in the game. Their play acting and diving on the floor and rolling around, I thought, spoiled the game. Um, it's not just theirs, though. No, Harry, no. Harry, Harry Maguire was doing the same. No, thing. I know, but they were, they were particularly bad. Well, I know, but, but if we're going to talk about diving, then there was going on on the other side as well. It was yeah, going but they on. were particularly bad. They were worse. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Well then. And Harry Maguire d dived. He did dive and got up and said, "No, no, no, it wasn't a penalty." Oh. Tried to, tried to, you know. But of course, there's no, I'm not excusing him at all. Not at all. Um, but I just thought they were awful, and um, I'm probably the wrong person to ask. I, I just thought, I, they got the results in the end, well, but I, I didn't. I didn't particularly enjoy the game. Yeah. I thought the Colombian antics after the the penalty was given were was a disgrace, and I thought Geiger was weak because it took for age for. Um, Kane to be able to take the penalty, which was a penalty, by the way, because he was holding him to start with, and then the ref never spotted it because he was looking at the other yeah. sort of melee, and as he turned round, he was almost like a jockey getting on a horse, wasn't he? He jumped on his back, and so he gave the penalty away. England were the least poor of two poor teams yeah. tonight. I think that's the way to sum it up. Columbia offered almost nothing for 75, 80 minutes, yeah. and England could have killed this team. But, but they just... And that final third that kept breaking down. Deli Alley couldn't get in the game. Sterling made some good moves, some good runs, but it was sort of bouncing off him at the last minute. Lingard should have won a penalty in the second half, but he wasn't clever enough. Should have gone across the defender. They both went to ground. Referee called it uh, correctly. And in the end, I, I thought once it went to all the way to penalties... I thought it was going to be the same old in, story. I really did. In, in, England, in fairness is. to England, I thought Colombia were playing for a draw from the opening whistle. Mm. When you play three up front, you've got Quintero and, and Cuadrado sat behind Falcao and eight just behind the ball, unable to catch up um, with, with any attacking play when, when you do manage it to get forward. It, it never looked like Colombia believed that they could win this game in, in 90 minutes and, and were just trying to get to 120 and, and hope to beat England from the spot. And as a result, I think that stifled England in their own creativity and made it a, a, a difficult game to watch. But... Colombia, for me, offered absolutely nothing. I think what Colombia offered was uh, the idea that this is the way that they were going to win the game. I mm -hmm. don't think Colombia stood on the field and, and thought and looked across and said, we have a good enough team to beat England unless we start doing things right. that, that disrupt England, that frustrate England, that frustrate the referee, that give us some calls, give us some set pieces and maybe Jeremy Mina gets on the end or something and then we win this match. I also think the fact that you don't have James Rodriguez on the field makes a huge difference for Colombia. James Rodriguez, not only the performance that he can give you, it, he frees up other players to do different things on the field. When he's on the field, then Quintero can play either underneath him or just in front of him. Cuadrado can go and play out in a wider area rather than underneath. When Cuadrado's playing underneath, he's taking his own space away and there's no option for Colombia to go on the attack. James Rodriguez makes a big difference. Take Harry Kane out of England. Sure. Take Neymar out of Brazil. Take Ronaldo out of Portugal. I mean, th this, this is the sort of Im impact that you have when your best player and the guy that you look to, your key piece is not there. Now you start searching and say, what, where are we going to get the creativity from? Where is going to be the guy that's going to put the ball down and play for us? That wasn't there for Colombia, so they search for another way to win the game. I didn't like it. I didn't care for it. But in the end, that's how they thought they would give themselves a chance. And they gave themselves a chance. I Made it all England, the way to penalties. I thought England allowed them back into the game. Yeah. Though. When they won, they looked they're quite comfortable, England. But every pass seemed to go backwards and yeah. backwards. And they just lost that momentum of going forwards all the time. So as soon as you start going backwards to the centre defenders, to the goalkeeper, they will start jumping 10 yards further forwards. And that's what, I mean, the, the goal was, I think, their first corner of, of, of the whole match. And mm. you can see they're a big side. I, I get that. But don't allow them into the, into the game. England will have to well, improve a hundredfold yeah. if they're going to threaten Sweden because they put a, a really good disciplined performance in today and they'll, they'll be a lot better than Colombia. So we need more from England. I wanted a good performance, you know, a, not a, necessarily a dominant performance because I knew 
I knew that, that these teams were quite close, but I wanted a, a better performance. I, I, than I think what, what, what was evident to me, and, and, and we saw from time to time, with, with the likes of, of Kane and Sterling in particular coming in, making those little runs into channels, and we're sitting there shouting, play it now. Mm. England just don't have any kind of pass in that midfield. So you pick the ball up and you're asking somebody to, to thread the eye of a needle. Nobody can. Henderson can't do that. The players that, that Gareth Southgate can call on, or even look to on the bench, mm. simply can't thread those little balls through because they were on and they were available, but they just don't have that quality. As a result, you're trying to, to batter down a door that Colombia just bolted shut when, when, when called a basket. I don't think, uh, with Sterling playing around Kane, I don't think it's allowing Dele Alli the, the room to make those runs into. He didn't into. do anything, did he? Say? I think he's one, one of the players that could be up for the chop. I mean, if he's fit for, for, uh, for selection, I, I think he could be up. Uh, for, for being left on the bench. But I just think the way they set up, it's, it's not, he's not quite working with Kane in the same manner he does with Tottenham. It's difficult sometimes at international level because some teams sit so deep and there isn't a lot of space there. But to go back to, to the point Mark was making about passing back, England almost got caught out with Walker. Yeah. They passed it back, passed it back. Then he took too long on the ball and they almost got caught out. The other side is, I think he might look at his substitutions. He brought Vardy on, they had two up front. Vardy never got a kick. Mm -hmm. You might look to break, you know, you might be thinking for future reference, a go away Loftus Cheek coming on. Yeah. Keep Kane up front, try and take control in the midfield towards the end of the game. Plus the fact Loftus Cheek against a big side like Colombia gives you an extra body from set pieces. And I think that is something that England and Southgate might look at, particularly against Sweden, who, like Colombia, are very good and do target long throws. Mm -hmm. And set pieces. To your point about Jamie Vardy, he comes on the field and then yeah. naturally you see Harry Kane dropping in a position mm -hmm. where he's more of a playmaker. I don't think he's as effective there as he would be as an out and out striker. So you're losing Harry Kane's presence mm -hmm. up top and you're really not gaining much underneath either. And so it feels like a wasted opportunity to find other options. Harry Kane should be your guy up top. That's it. You don't move him from there because anytime that he's there, there's a real opportunity for him to score a goal. I think Southgate will say, I, honestly, I'm, just, I'm sorry. It's, it's, Try to think what he'll say. I think he'll he'll say we're through. I think he'll say we're through. Mm -hmm. But we we can. Mm. I wasn't happy. Or, yeah. I, 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 or we can do a hell of a lot more if we play like that. I mean, everybody can they play better. Oh yes, yes. Oh, 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 oh yes, they can. They, can, they can't play like a manner in which the French will play, or in a manner in which Brazil will play. But they can play a damn better. sight better than that. Now, Sweden might not have as many dirty tricks as Colombia, but it will be just as defensive. Mm. Uh, and, and they'll be better than Sweden. Were be, are going to be better than Colombia. Better organised. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we all agree Colombia are not a great team, and they certainly were today, missing the star man, as Ali said. How many chances did England make today? Yeah. Certainly in ninety minutes. How many, how many saves did Osmina make? You know, that was the worrying oh, no, no. thing. It was a penalty, yeah. and England have worked on the set pieces. Of course, they have, and they they deserve the penalty. But I, I was thinking, you know, where's the where's the chances? Where are the people getting round so the back? So why not? What, what, what's, what's the issue? Well, I don't, I, are they scared? Is the sideway pass easy? Well, I thought, I, thought, I thought they need to get more confidence because I thought that, certainly in the first half, and then they got the goal, every pass was the safe pass. It was in, into midfield and then it was back to one of the centre defenders. You know, no one had the ability to get it and turn quick and go forward. You know, John Stones was trying to pick, play nice balls through and I thought he had a decent game. You know, he was trying to play balls through all the time, but if it's just getting bounced back to him or bounced back to Maguire, it's like... So how do you address that? So well, they need, they, they, you know, Gareth will have to speak to them, say, look, turn. You've, they do it for the club. They do it for Man United. They do it for Tottenham. They'll turn and go forwards because that's, what, and what's that, that's why they're picked. But you just wonder whether it's because it's the occasion, because they're only young, because they don't want to make mistakes. They don't want to be vilified by, you know, the general public back home if, if anything negative happens. But they need to get a bit more confidence in like the Brazilians do, like the French do. And know that we're behind them. A bit more pace in the team. Yeah. I, I, I think, I, looking forward, I think there might be a couple of changes. Right. Seriously, I think uh, Loftus Cheek might play for the reasons that I said, for mm. the physicality and the fact he's looked quite comfortable. And I get a, a, a for Ali. Yeah. Uh, and I think there could be another one where I think Sterling might go into a wider position or, or uh, drop a little deeper. I think possibly Rashford might come mm. in and they might juggle it around a little to go for his pace because if, if Kane is dropping a little deeper. He's very good at spinning in behind, so I think we might see a couple, of, at least one, if not two, personnel changes for England for the Sweden game based on what he saw tonight over the 90 minutes. I think that's the thing. England can go through the middle. We, we, we saw that. We, we've spoken hmm. about that. Maybe it is 
going wide. You, you've got players like Rashford, like Sterling, who are very good one and one. Wise, yeah. Now, whether beating Sweden is by getting players down the byline and crossing is, is another point that Gareth Southgate has to, has to figure out. But quite clearly, they can't go through the middle. But they have options. You've got the pace of, of Rashford. You've got Vardy that you can call on. There are ways that the thing that England can get by, get by their deficiencies in midfield and still create more than enough opportunities and give Sweden more than enough to, to worry well, How many times has an English player... Because England, on you know better than me, Mark, England on penalties have been... It's been a shocker, isn't it? Mm -hmm. How many times has a player missed a penalty and it was Jordan Henderson's turn tonight and it's been Chrissy Wardle and it's been Stuart Pearce and it's been Gareth Southgate himself and the goalkeeper, or whatever, he's not been able to bail him out. And tonight, uh, young Pickford... Yep. Uh, he's uh, been uh, criticised in some quarters, hasn't he? Yeah. Well, uh, an, absolute opportune, uh, an absolute opportune and needed time pulled out yeah. a great save just to bail England out, but more importantly, bail Jordan Henderson out. You're our laws expert. Mm -hmm. You're allowed to do the old wobbly uh, crossbar. Yeah. That's allowed? That, that's, that's no problem at all. You can stand on the line and do whatever you want. Do the what? The old wobbly crossbar wobbly. job. That's what Jordan was up to, wasn't he? But that's allowed? That's, that, I don't that's know. there. That, that's, that's no problem at all. That's OK. That's not a problem at all. Oh. <laughs> How would you rank England of the eight teams that are left? They're down there with Russia. No, I, I think oh. higher than Russia and, 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 to be honest, higher than Sweden as well. Uh, but when we talk about the options that England has going forward and we think about England passing sideways and back, I just don't see the personnel of a guy who's actually able to pick that pass, right. the one going forward, the through ball that puts somebody in a 1v1 situation. So even if you have the runners in front of you, that service has to come from somebody. Jordan Henderson is not that guy. So and yes, is out. Can we pick him up? <laughs> no, no. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. So where, where is that ball going to come from? Because you can do all the movement in front of it, but the production has to come from somewhere in the middle where right. you can actually find that ball and spread, mm. spread teams apart. Sweden, they're not going to spread themselves. You're going to have to find a way to spread that team apart. Look, at the end of the England-Belgium game, when you looked at this side of the draw, you thought this was England's biggest stumbling block between getting to the final. No, Colombia were desperately disappointing. I yes. expected a whole lot more from them. But by hook or by crook, England got through. Yep. And they, they achieved the result on the side of the bracket that they wanted. And now Gareth Southgate is happy with the decisions he made. I was critical about, uh, of him for in playing against Belgium. So you take that. Mm. And, and despite yep. the poor yep. performance, despite all the worries and the concerns, you take the result and you go marching on. Because on paper, as we stand here... England are better than, than everybody else on their side of the bracket. Can just I just say that from an outsider's perspective, I have nothing to do with England. Mm -hmm. But it is, I am curious as to how the ceiling for England keeps moving as yeah. the competition goes on. <laughs> yes. And it fluctuates and it goes to all sorts of different places. And so now you're playing Sweden. So if we had said to you prior to the tournament, well, you get to the quarterfinals, you lose in the quarterfinals, that's about what you would have expected and, and certainly hoped for. Yeah. Now you lose to Sweden and it's like, oh, well, now we're disappointed because we're better than Sweden. So it's a moving target for these players. What, is, what are the expectations for themselves? Those are the important ones that within that locker room, that they, what do they expect from themselves, regardless of what's happening on the outside? The pressure is Iceland well, yeah. and all these other games. You, yeah, you, take, yeah, yeah. you take the England... 1 to 11, and you put the Sweden 1 to 11 in, and it's, it's, it's not even a comparison. Yeah, exactly. It's not comparable. Yeah. But that doesn't mean Iceland wasn't comparable in the yeah. Euro. It doesn't mean yeah. you can't play. You're only going to get away with playing like that so many yeah. times. But yeah. what's, no, I, I, what's the good feeling in the locker room, would you suggest? Is it yes, we're through yeah, to the quarterfinals? I think, it or, I think or, it'll be yes, we're through to the oh, quarterfinals, yeah. but I also. <laughs> If they're going to advance and go forward again, they have to, they have to improve. Yeah. I think it's, a, like we've said with a number of teams, this was a wake-up call for England, but they've, got, they've gotten through, thankfully. Yes. You know, it's not a Spain where they've gone, oh, you know, we should have won there and they've gone home. They've gotten through, as Shaka rightly said, but they have to play a whole lot better because Panama and Tunisia, it was a long time ago, and we know what type of teams they were. Yeah. They didn't turn up, of course, that, that 11 didn't turn up against Belgium. They were back in today. Odds were in their favour. Mm -hmm. They were fresher than Colombia. Colombia were poor. They were missing their maestro. And they stumbled through. Yeah. They cannot afford to stumble against Sweden. And if they get away with it against Sweden, someone will knock them out. <laughs> so, regardless of getting to the quarters or the semis, if they keep on playing, someone will beat them. But if this game wasn't a wake-up call, nothing will be, surely. In the sense that... No, but it's, it's a good wake-up call. Yeah. It's right. a yeah, wake-up call. Still, still, you you, you still go back to the hotel, hey, and you're like... Phew. 
you know, great, we're, we're in it. We're in the damn thing. And we're, you don't, don't matter if you're playing Brazil or, or Sweden mm. or however. The one thing England, if they haven't got great passes in the middle of the park, and, and they haven't, they've got tidy passes, is they've got to be able to inject a bit of pace into the game. If you look at Brazil in particular, I know we're talking about some of the great players, but you look at the pace that Willian injected against Mexico, if England can do that to Sweden with a Rashford, with a Sterling, and people like that, it, it will open up for them. But if they just play as pedantic and as mm. slow as they did, it, it will be a difficult night within, them, the within themselves, yeah, because and Sweden will just be organised. So if you're slow, you will allow them to get behind the ball, to set up, and that'll do them. But if you're quick, you know, pace is everything nowadays. If you're quick and you go forwards and you pass forwards, you know, you'll be able to cut through teams. But if you're slow and just side to side to side, yeah. we've seen it any tournament, Spain, Russia, a lot of the games, anybody can get back in a nice shape if you're just dilly-dallying with the ball there and going backwards yeah. and going to the goalkeeper.